You're listening to the Greek's Gridiron, live with Ethan Haristadoulou. All right, everybody, welcome back to the Greek's Gridiron. I am Ethan Haristadoulou. It's February 11th, 2022, and we are just a few days away from the NFL's biggest game of the year, Super Bowl 56, where we have the Rams taking on the Bengals in SoFi Stadium in L.A., The Bengals are the home team, but they are in the Rams stadium. There's a lot of excitement going into this one here. We have Matthew Stafford's career legacy pretty much on the line in this game here, going up against an up-and-coming Joe Burrow who's ready to stamp the beginning of his legacy in the NFL history books. A lot to get into, a lot to talk about. So make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and let's talk Super Bowl 56. So to start things off, we will begin with the X factors, the guys that I have identified as the most important players of each team that need to have big games for their team to ultimately come out the winner of this game. Now, I have two for each team that I have labeled because I'm not going to pick a bunch of guys for X factors. I think you can really only have maybe one or two guys on the team that is going to be the legitimate guy that needs to be the big difference maker for each team. And I have two because... I think that there's kind of like a a sort of, how, how would I say this? There's an obvious answer for both teams. And then there's also, not to say that they're not as obvious, but important ones that I think won't get mentioned as much, potentially, as the two obvious ones of each team. So for the Bengals, we start with wide receiver T. Higgins. That's right, not Jamar Chase but T. Higgins. Why am I saying T. Higgins and not Jamar Chase? Well, Jamar Chase is an obvious one. I don't think anyone would question that, you know, he should have a really big game in the Super Bowl. Uh, He has had such a fantastic year altogether, 1,455 yards on the year, 13 touchdowns. I mean, the guy has been an absolute monster. But the reason I'm bringing up T. Higgins is because on the other side of the ball for the LA Rams, you were looking at a guy like Jalen Ramsey, who during press conferences, was talking about how he wants to shadow Jamar Chase. He wants that one-on-one matchup with him. And depending on how the defensive scheme shakes out for the Rams, that may or may not happen or maybe happen more or less than some people are expecting, Ramsey included. So with that, I think that T. Higgins himself he can be a deciding factor for this game. He has really come on the last couple of games for the Bengals, and he's had a really good year, 1,000-yard season and everything, so don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that he's just coming on now, but just specifically the last couple of weeks, he has been a big piece in the offense and a reason for success in the Bengals' playoff run here into the Super Bowl. Again, Jamar Chase, obviously the pick that, you know, everyone expects him to have a really good game. But T. Higgins being the guy that, you know, should things get really gritty between Ramsey and Chase, and he's maybe, you know, being limited in receptions or maybe not quite getting as many yards as normal. A guy like T. Higgins who had six catches and 103 yards versus KC and seven catches and 96 yards versus Tennessee, like I said, two strong couple of weeks, these last two playoff games they've had, could be a huge difference maker for the Bengals. The second X factor I have labeled out for Cincy, and this is one that I think is fairly obvious, like I mentioned, is going to be quarterback Joe Burrow. He needs to have a big game against what is a really good Rams defense overall. There are a couple weaknesses here and there that I think Joe Burrow will be able to identify and attack going into this game. But obviously, the quarterback himself, he needs to have a massive game here going up against a team that has bought you know, all in on winning the Super Bowl this year and with success has found themselves hosting the Super Bowl now. So obviously Joe Burrow is a big guy, but T Higgins, in my opinion, could be like the sneaky X factor who, if he has a really big game for the Bengals, the Bengals could come out and pull off this upset. Now for the Rams, again, I have a guy that I really want to talk about. And then obviously the more obvious pick. For the guy that I think who on defense needs to stand up and have a big game It is none other than the multi-time All-Pro, the man himself, the anchor of the defense, defensive tackle, Aaron Donald. He said it himself. He has won so many individual accolades throughout his entire career. You could argue that Aaron Donald has been the best defensive player in the NFL since his very first season in the NFL. The guy has won so many awards and quite honestly, probably deserves an MVP award at some point in his career. And it's unfortunate he hasn't locked one up yet, but obviously he's been respected with his defensive player of the year's first team, all pros, all that stuff. But Donald himself even said it. He wants a championship. 
If he wants a championship, this is the game to do it. He needs to step up and be the guy that I think everyone in the league knows he is. He is the man. I will never question his ability. He is leaps and bounds, year in and year out, the most consistent defensive player in the NFL. He is constantly being doubled, even sometimes triple teamed. You cannot discount Aaron Donald. And this is a game where if he wants that ring and he wants to put the single, you know, the, the single accolades aside and he wants a championship. This is the game to do it, and you have a Bengals offensive line that you should be able to take advantage of and should be a good matchup in favor of Aaron Donald. The other guy that I have labeled on here, again, the quarterback, Matthew Stafford. It's put up or shut up time. I have been talking about him all year long. I am a huge Matthew Stafford fan. I have been a huge Matthew Stafford fan since his very first season as a Detroit Lion. I have always touted him as a great quarterback and have argued that he is a top five quarterback in some seasons. And in this year, I think he was a top five quarterback as well. This is the time for him to define his career. Was it just the, you know, the ineptitude of the Lions holding him back? And can he get the job done today, or not today, excuse me, this come Sunday in that Super Bowl game against the Cincinnati Bengals? I'm excited for this one. I think that there's, you know, but besides these four guys that I've mentioned, there are a ton of other players who, you know, could potentially be a big proponent in what happens and who ends up winning this game. But these four guys specifically, I think, are determining factors in their team's success or non-success in winning the Super Bowl. Now, let's talk some keys to the game, some important matchups, some things to watch as we go through that I think will ultimately lead to the decision of this game for one side or the other. I have three different things to talk about with you all. And the first one I think is one that's been talked about all season long. It was talked about during the draft for the Bengals this year. It was talked about, you know, even during this playoff run. Uh, And it has been talked about all this week as well. Can the Bengals offensive line survive the pass rush of the LA Rams? Obviously, the Bengals' offensive line has not been great. 55 sacks allowed throughout the regular season, and just in this playoff run alone have allowed 13 sacks, nine from those Tennessee Titans. It was a pretty ugly game that they ultimately ended up winning, but you cannot ignore what happened when they went up against another premier pass-rushing defense. You look at what the Rams have done this year, 50 sacks on the season, And then they also have the five sacks in the playoffs. Now they have kind of slowed down in terms of getting after the quarterback. I was actually kind of pulling through some numbers here and just looking at averages. 50 sacks a season broke down to about 2.9 a game for the Rams. So almost three sacks. And then during the playoffs, they've only averaged about a sack and a half roughly in their defense they have been playing some of the better offensive lines in the league in terms of pass protection. They went up against San Francisco, who was 11th in sacks allowed, and they were also against Tampa Bay, who was the best pass protection team in the league that was first in sacks allowed, with the Cardinals being the outlier at 18th. So, you know, this is really, this is put up or shut up for the Bengals here. I mean, this offensive line needs to play the best game of their lives, in my opinion, to win this game. Because you are going against one of the best, if not the best, pass rushing attack that was in the NFL this season. I know statistically they're third in sacks, but I mean, when you look at pressures and you look at sacks, quarterback hits and things like that, this is going to be a tall task for the Bengals. And I think ultimately this game will, as great of a season as Jamar Chase has had, will determine if they really made the right choice this offseason electing Chase instead of a premier offensive tackle in somebody like Panay Sewell. I'm not doubting the Jamar Chase pick anymore. It has been a phenomenal pick for them, and you cannot take away the season that Jamar Chase has had this year. It has been incredible. Again, 1,455 yards, 13 touchdowns, ludicrous numbers for a rookie. However, if it ends up looking anything like last year where the Chiefs offensive line Obviously, they didn't have their starters in, but it was not a great unit altogether going up against a Tampa Bay pass rush that was healthy, that was aggressive, and just went after them and teed off on Mahomes all game. There is a potential that this game looks eerily similar to what happened last year if Joe Burrow does not have the time in the pocket to do what he does best. I'm a little concerned. For the Bengals, they need to focus on establishing some sort of a run game, even if it's not a super aggressive run game. They just need to keep the Rams defense honest. Do not allow them to just continually bring pressure and, you know, make Joe Burrow uncomfortable. And on top of that, 
the wide receivers need to be on their A game. They need to be running the best routes of their lives if they want to win this game here and get open for Burrow so he can get the ball out and get it out quickly to avoid being taken down by Donald, by Floyd, by Miller, and all those guys. Craig, I mean, there's so many people that can get after the quarterback on this Rams defense. Wide receivers need to be on point, and they need to make sure that they don't just abandon the run game completely and allow the Rams to just start teeing off on Burrow. My second key to the game, and this one is for the Rams here, a question for them. Can this Rams secondary actually lock down the aggressive and honestly prolific air attack that this Bengals has put together this year? The Rams secondary issues, obviously no secret going through this playoff run here. They brought in Eric Weddle. They're missing both their safeties. You know, some tough stuff going on here. Darius Williams has kind of been up and down. He's had some good games. He's had some bad games. He did just let up 100 yards or so up against the 49ers, just their last playoff game in the NFC Championship. And the defense overall is 22nd in the league in passing yards allowed this season, but have you know, they, they've, I guess, improved on that total a little bit. They were averaging 242 through the year, and they're sitting at 232 through the playoffs, which would put them around like 18th instead of 22nd when I was looking at the numbers there. And they do have some interceptions, four, of, uh, four total altogether through the playoffs. So there is some signs of consistency. They've done a really good job. They've, they've basically, they've stayed about as good as they've been, even with a slight tick of improvement there, averaging slightly less on the yardage mark. Not a massive increase, but an increase nonetheless. You look at what the Bengals do offensively, one of the best passing attacks in the league. They are seventh best in yards per game this season. Uh, and on top of that, they boast a tandem of 2,000-yard wide receivers in both T. Higgins and Jamar Chase. Chase having that 1,455 I keep mentioning. Higgins had 1,091 yards himself. On top of that, Tyler Boyd, he's no slouch himself. He had 828 yards as well. So there are a lot of guys on this offense who can put up numbers. And I don't want to forget Joe Mixon, who's a great receiving back. He had three touchdowns, 314 yards this year. Uzoma, the tight end, nearly 500 yards, five touchdowns. He's been excellent over the middle for this team. The Bengals offense boasts arguably one of the best receiving cores in terms of tight end, running back, and receivers all together, it is like a five-headed monster over there between Uzoma, between Mixon, and, you know, Boyd, Chase, Higgins, all of those guys. It is like you're fighting a, 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 a five-headed serpent that can just bite at you in any way imaginable, and you need to be ready for it. It's going to be a tall test for the Rams. Um, and, you know, arguably, this is probably the most difficult receiving group that the Rams have faced this year. And the only real argument to that is probably the week three matchup against the, the Buccaneers when they caught them at full strength, when they still had Brown Godwin and Evans and Gronk and all those guys, that's probably the most comparable and, and best argument for that there. But I would say that at this point in this stage, this is probably the best receiving group that the Rams have played. So a tall task, can they get it done? Can they shut down that just absolute bonkers air attack that they have over there in Cincinnati? I honestly don't. I don't know. I, I it's going to boil down to to a few things. Can the pressure really get to Joe Burrow? C can these corners and say you know and, and these backup safeties and Eric Weddle can they all play the best games of their lives to win this? Because that's really what it takes to win the Super Bowl. You need to play the best game of your life if you want this ring. My third question. This one's going to go towards the Cincinnati Bengals because this is something that has concerned me about them all year long. I've talked about it a few times as well. The Bengals have had issues defending the middle of the football field for how good Logan Wilson has been this year, and even Jermaine Pratt, and of course, Mike Hilton, their slot cornerback. Uh, they've all been very consistent, but they've also had hiccups down the road here and there. Logan Wilson, famously, 190 yards allowed against the Mike White-led New York Jets early on in the season. Jermaine Pratt has consistently allowed about an 80% or so completion rate. Wilson's sitting a little bit higher at 83. Mike Hilton has probably been the best of the three, of course. He's been really good. He has allowed a few touchdowns here and there. I believe it was four on the year altogether, uh, but he's allowed about a 72% completion percentage his way. The thing that really concerns me altogether, though, is like when you add these numbers up and you look at just like how many yards they've allowed, the completion numbers they've allowed, the you know just the the amount of the amount of offense they've essentially allowed through the air as a tandem covering the inside because they are the inside guys for this defense. They're averaging a near eighty percent completion rate, seventy nine point two to be exact between the three. And on top of that, when I took all the numbers, added them up, and you know, and, and went down into specifics. 
these three guys, Hilton, Jermaine Pratt, and uh, Logan Wilson, I almost <laughs> slipped my name there, or slipped my mind there for a second, and Logan Wilson have al- allowed 36.3% of the Bengals' total air yardage through the year. Three players on this team accounted for a third of the y- more than a third, almost almost like, what was that, like almost a fourth of the yardage allowed, very close, or more than a fourth. I mean, I, you're you're looking at, I don't, I don't know what the math is on that, 36.3%, that's more than a third, I know that, 33% is a third. <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, the amount of yardage allowed by this group of three, it's a little bit alarming. And when you look at the Rams, you have Van Jefferson who plays out of the slot whenever Cooper Cup isn't in there uh, or whenever he's relieving Cooper Cup. Cooper Cup, obviously, if, if you've heard what the doubters have said about him this year and the people that are questioning him, they consider him the ultimate slot guy and he's benefited from playing in the slot. It's easier to play out of the slot. Well, if that's the case, this group of three right here better bring their A game because Cooper Cup is the best inside guy in the league according to all the doubters. And, you know, he doesn't play outside. He plays inside, whatever it may be. We've seen what Cooper Cup can do this season, especially in these playoffs. Matthew Stafford to Cooper Cup literally ripped the heart out of the Buccaneers in that playoff game just a few weeks ago. You better be ready for what, you know, the doubters call the ultimate slot receiver. I consider Cup to be one of the best, if not the best. He had a fantastic season this year. I think it goes beyond him just being a great slot guy, but... Whatever it may be, whether you are a, a, a hater, a doubter, or a, somebody who praises Cup for what he's done, you can't deny he's been great over the middle. The Bengals have been shaky. They need to have a great game on the inside and prevent Cup from having the monster numbers that he's had all year long. Now, for my wrap-up here, and to send you guys off and to end off my preview for the Super Bowl here, we'll talk a little bit of the betting odds and stuff like that. Just kind of give my opinions here. This is not betting advice, just giving my thoughts on the numbers and what I'm seeing as I look around the sports betting world. So the Rams at this moment in time are minus three and a half. It's been pretty steady there. It started at minus four and it moved down to minus three and a half. Pretty good odds there in my opinion. Uh, you could uh, realistically, either one of these is a pretty solid bet because I feel like the Bengals do have a really good shot at winning this game. It's more or less going to boil down to your personal preference of who do you think is going to win this game. It's it's a personal choice at this because you can't really go wrong with either one of these if you str- if you strongly believe in the Bengals or the Rams here because I think this game is going to come down to within a seven point game. So you could go Bengals or you could go Rams. Now, for the money line, Rams at minus 175, Bengals at 150. Some interesting odds there. Not Nothing too crazy, but, uh, you know, that it is what it is. Again, one of those things where this is like 50-50 when you're betting on them. Who do you like more realistically? For the over-under, we're sitting at 48.5 points on the game. Now, uh, based off of the scoreline that I have, you guys will know what I think of this here. And for my winner, I am going to go with... And I'm slightly nervous about this answer because I've bet against them in two out of their three playoff games this offseason or this postseason, excuse me. And I've been burned betting against the Bengals. I've been rooting for them the whole way. This is the Super Bowl that I wanted to see personally. I wanted Rams and Bengals. I love what the Bengals have done this year. I've been a big Matthew Stafford guy. This has been my Super Bowl. I am taking the Rams to win, and I'm taking them to win at a score of 28 to 24. Like I said, I think it is going to be a close game. Um, I do not expect it to be a blowout in any shape or form. I think that the Bengals have a good shot to keep it close. The only way this game gets really ugly and lopsided, in my opinion, is if the Rams really start to tee off on Burrow and that offensive line just crumbles. Like I said, something similar to what happened to the Chiefs and Buccaneers last year when the Chiefs just could not protect Patrick Mahomes. But I like the Rams 28-24. to I do like the over on this one here. I think there's going to be some scoring. You have two really good offenses uh, and two good defenses, one maybe slightly better than the other with the Rams being slightly better than the Bengals but ultimately I do see a handful of scores happening in this game from both sides of the ball and whether the Rams win 28 to 24 maybe it's the Bengals 28 to 24 somewhere along those lines within that realm I do think the over is certainly possible here 
But that is my preview for the Super Bowl, my predictions, and what I think is going to go down in the game. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. And again, make sure you like, hit that subscribe button. I will see you guys in the next video. Enjoy the rest of your week. Happy Friday, everyone, and I'll see you next time.